And I was buried beneath my shame And who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn Until I met you And I was breathing but not into life And all my fears I tried to hide It was my turn Till I met you You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious face And call my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious face Your mercy has saved my soul And now your freedom is all that I know The old me knew Jesus when I met you Do you love Easter? Praise God. Well, you see, I've got my Easter basket. I'm ready to do the deal. I just want to go ahead and set some of you free. I know it's not about the Easter bunny. I know it's not about the egg hunts and the wonderful uh, lunch you're probably going to have with your friends and family. Jesus really is the hero of my Easter story. He is the hero of my salvation. But what I want you to know is you can enjoy this stuff a little bit. 
But what I want to help you to do today is make sure that Jesus is the hero of the day. Jesus is the reason for this day, and he alone we have come to worship. Let me invite you to have your seat this morning. We're going to have a marvelous time today. I'm so grateful for all of our staff and volunteers, all the hard work they have done into getting ready for this special day. And we hope that you will have a very blessed worship experience with us. So if you're here today, you're on campus for the very first time ever. You're a first-time guest, and we're so delighted that you're here. Harvest, let's welcome our first-time guest. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. If you're worshiping with us today and you're not on campus, you're online, thank you for worshiping with us today. We're so grateful that you're there. I want to just encourage you to not get distracted by all the things there in your home environment. Just kind of push all that stuff mentally out and let's get focused on worshiping the Lord. Be sure to interact with your online host. Smash those reaction buttons and let us know that you're here, you're there, you're worshiping the Lord, and we're going to have a great time together today. Well, let me just ask a quick favor. I know that you don't like to do extra stuff when you're like a first-time guest, so therefore, I'm going to make this quick and painless. We want to bless you. We want to give you stuff. I would even like to be able to send you a letter next week just thanking you for being here today, and the way you're going to help me is by giving me your name and address. Would everyone today please make sure you fill out one of these yellow Connect cards that are there in the seats in front of you, and I did say everyone, so I'm asking home folks too, and here's what's in it for you. Well, if you're a first First time guest, we want to bless you with some homemade treats. When I asked what the treats were, I think they were trying to keep me from getting into the treats. And they wouldn't tell me that they were cookies. I've got a suspicious feeling that there are cookies out there, homemade cookies. There's some other homemade treats. But we want to bless every first time guest that's here on campus today with one of these uh, bag full of goodies. We've got some other things we want to bless you with. But here's the big deal. For those of you who would fill out one of these Connect cards and leave it at the Connect table right after service on your way out, here's what's going to take place. Your card gets entered into a drawing for one of five $50 restaurant gift cards that we're going to be giving away. So please do that. We want to bless you. That means during this next week worth of beautiful weather, one evening your family gets to go to supper on us. Isn't that a pretty cool deal? All right, praise God. I'm so glad that you're here today, and Pastor John is about to come. He's going to receive the offering. He'll talk to you more about these Connect cards, but let me just assure you, all of my eggs are in the Easter basket. Amen? Amen. How many know that he lives this morning? Amen. You ask me how I know because he lives inside of me. Amen. The Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. I'm, I'm uh, about... I'm up to lead us in our time of giving. If you have a worship guide, uh, and our first, for our first time guesses, no pressure in giving, but if you would like to give on our worship guide on the top right hand corner, you can find the ways to give uh, check, cash, you can give by text. And if you need Wi Fi, our Wi Fi password is on the top right hand corner of our worship guide. You should see also directions on our screen behind me and ways to give. There's several ways to give here, and Pastor May mentioned about uh, everyone fill out a Connect card uh, to, with a, uh, to place in the offering basket. No, we're not placing it in the offering basket. We're placing it in the Connect Center outside the doors at the end of service. But I want to give you an opportunity to fill out those Connect cards. I want to fill out a Connect card myself, and I want to give you a couple minutes to fill out those Connect cards and uh, prepare your offering. Can I get some music in the background? But I want to, everyone grab a Connect card. It should be in the seat in front of you. It should be a pen. And let's fill those out and, uh, and prepare our hearts to give.
also want to make mention on those connect cards. If you desire to, if you're saved and desire to be baptized, there's a place there that you can request a baptism. And we also have a baptism class that goes on, I think, the second uh, Wednesday on each month to prepare you for that. Amen. I've got mine filled out. Can I get the offering scripture placed on the screen at this time? Offering scriptures from Luke 6, chapter, and the 38th verse. And the word says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it shall be used back unto you again. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you that this morning we can enter in your presence. That this morning you have given us something to give toward the kingdom of God. Lord, we pray that as we give these gifts that you would bless it and multiply it. Lord, we thank you that you gave your son and that the son gave his life that we might be free. And Lord, in these gifts we give, Lord, we actually bless it. Bless the ministry here. Bless the homes. Bless the going out and the coming in. And Lord, I ask you to bless the Father going to this service. In your mighty name we pray. And let everyone say amen and amen. After you've given, I want you to turn your attention to the screen. We have a special video for you after you have given. A reminder, the Connect cards go at a Connect Center right outside the exit of each door at the end of service. God bless you. He is risen. Three small words that brought the collective pace of humanity to an absolute standstill. He is risen. Three words that shattered prisons. Words that shook the earth's foundations. Words that transformed a sense of utter despair into cries of pure joy and ecstasy echoes of history's greatest triumph that still shape our reality. Even today, we're assaulted by constant distraction, countless sources waging war for our attention, yet three words pierce the noise. In our hunger for validation, our desperate pleas for love and attention, three words calm our anxieties. In a universe spinning at breakneck speed, its inhabitants locked in an existential crisis, three words proclaim the purpose of our existence. He is risen. Lay hold of this truth and embrace the peace within. Yesterday, fear reigned in our hearts. Yesterday, we sat in crippling darkness. Yesterday we suffered abuse and all the accusations of a broken world, but today our King, our Healer, our Defender is risen. And this reality doesn't merely accompany us on a meaningless journey. This changes everything. For you see, if He is risen, then all other pursuits become secondary. All of our failures become insignificant. All criticisms and condemnations become irrelevant. There is only His word, His mission, and His infinite, unconditional love for you. Because He is risen, we look to tomorrow. Tomorrow we will stop defining our worth through status and social media. Tomorrow we will together build an everlasting kingdom. Tomorrow and every day after, we will dance in the radiance of a redeeming savior who crushed death and set us free. There is nothing that Jesus cannot overcome. We know this because he lives. We know this because he is risen. Amen. Will y'all stand and join us in worship? If you have kids in kids' church, you may want to have your phones ready because I think we're going to have some guests with us.
taste of His goodness Find what you're looking for For God so loved the world that He gave us His one and all Son to save us Whoever believes in Him will live forever
was the God of the mountain He is the God of the valley There's not a place Your mercy and grace Won't find me again Oh, there's nothing Better than you Oh, there's nothing Better than you Oh, there's nothing Nothing is better than you Oh, I know Oh, there's nothing Nothing matters. If Jesus is alive, nothing else matters. Amen. During the time of Hitler's invasion of Poland, which was technically the beginning of World War II, under his Nazist regime, they began to invade Poland and people are leaving by the masses as quickly as they can. On one such train trip, the last train out of Poland for the rescue time, there's a young mother who's on this train. 
and she's holding her infant newborn, itty bitty baby. She also has her small toddler in tow with her. And they're trying to escape the bombings that are taking place in Poland. As they're on their way out, this is a train trip that should have only taken hours, but it ended up taking days because the train repeatedly had to stop because of the intensity of the bombings that were taking place. By the time the train finally arrives safely out of Poland to rescue the babies that are on board are sick and they're starving to death. It's a very horrific time. After they disembark and they get off this train, the young mother is greeted by a group of nuns who work at a hospital, and they agree to take her newborn baby to the hospital with them and nurse it back to health. She gets a sense of relief because finally they're free and they're going to be at peace. But her joy was short-lived. The very next morning, she learns that the hospital where her infant is has been bombed during the night and that her newborn babe has died. It's a sense of utter despair that hit her soul all of a sudden as she's handed a flashlight and she's told, you're welcome to search through the rubble and see if maybe you can find the body of your baby. Can you imagine the pain and the anguish that overwhelmed her soul? A life without Resurrection Sunday would be just as hopeless. But what if death doesn't win? As this story continues, she's got her toddler in tow, this young mother does, and she's doing her best to frantically search the rubble. And as many of you mothers can attest to, you know the cry of your baby and you'd recognize the cry of your baby over the sounds of New York City as she's looking and she's searching suddenly she hears a cry and her maternal instinct kicks in she knows this is my child and she finds her babe alive (laughs) wow And I want to tell you that all of a sudden that a sense of relief and joy and peace overwhelmed and flooded her soul. But friends, what you and I must understand, this is exactly what Resurrection Sunday means to the crucifixion. That now everything's at peace. Now it means everything's going to be all right. We can rest in the fact that He has risen just as He said. Glory to God. Today is we think about what Easter means. Resurrection Sunday, I will tell you today, is the day that changed everything. It changes the mood of hopelessness and to understanding, you know what, don't matter what the situation looks like, my God's still on His throne, my Savior is resurrected from the grave, and everything's going to be all right. I hope you grab a hold of that. What we need to understand today is that Easter is the main event that separates Christianity from all the world's dead religions. Easter Sunday is the day that makes you and I almost kind of like want to pull up our chest and stick it out a little bit and understand, you know what, we're on the winning side. I'm on the right side. My Savior lives. There's not another religion in this world that can claim a resurrected Savior. There are hundreds upon hundreds of religions in this world, but not one can boast of an empty tomb. You see, Christianity has this distinction. And if I were to be looking at a catalog of religions trying to decide what path I would go and what path I would encourage my children to pursue, I have to tell you, Christianity gives, pulls out all the stops. When you've got a living Savior, friend, that's the way you should go. You should give your life to Him and follow Him with all you have. Today we find that the best news that ever hit this universe was the news that came out of Jerusalem, just outside of Jerusalem, near a cemetery where the first two individuals heard this news. He is not here, for he is risen. Let's go into Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, and let's read about this blessed resurrection time. Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. The Bible says, Now after the Sabbath... As the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. 
His countenance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. And so, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, Rejoice! So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. We find on this first resurrection morning, there are some prepared messengers with a prepared message to give to God's people. What is this message? This message is obviously the message that Jesus lives. He is not here. He has risen. But what we must understand is that this is not a message for those who are looking for a dead religion. This is a message for those who are seeking Jesus. This is a message for those who have grown hopeless in their life and they've got so many questions and not near enough answers and they realize they need something from outside of their own source of power. They need strength, they need help, and they need hope. And if that describes you today, congratulations, you're in the right place. Welcome to the message of Resurrection Sunday. Glory to God. This morning... We look into this passage of Scripture, and we find that the resurrection changes everything. It means each and every aspect of our lives can be changed to the glory of God. Now, many of us have misspoken in our lives, and we've said something that is utterly untrue. We have said, I can't change. This is just who I am. But I tell you, because of the power of the risen Savior, you can change. You can be changed. This is the message of Resurrection Sunday. Each and every one of us can be changed by the glory of God into a new creation. Every one of us has that possibility and has that potential if we will lean our faith into the resurrected Savior. When we open up this passage of Scripture, we find the very first command that these women heard are these words here, do not be afraid. It's the primary command that they heard. Above all else, this is what the angel started with, do not be afraid. It's the primary command of Scripture to God's people. We have nothing to be afraid of. Faithful followers of the Lord Jesus Christ don't have any fears. We should not be afraid of anything, not even death. But why do we fear death? I think we fear death because it's the unknown. But I think some of us have been raised properly. And here in the Bible Belt, you've heard enough of the gospel seed sown into your soul. You recognize I should be afraid because I know the gospel is true. You recognize I deserve to pay the full penalty for my sins. You understand, the wages of sin is death, and that means an eternal separation from God. But the good news is, Jesus himself bore our sins on the tree. Glory to God. The cross is so important. I think most years, most Christians skip right past Good Friday, and they forget about the significant fact that Jesus went to a cross, friend, that he did not have to go to. He chose to do that for you and for me. The wages of sin is death. Death demanded a payment be paid for the sinfulness of humanity. And Jesus, the one who was without sin, went all the way. He was obedient unto the death, the death of the cross. You and I should pause and just praise Jesus for going to the cross this morning. Amen. Glory to his name. But the end of it is not at the cross. Each and every year when I celebrate the Resurrection Sunday, I want to tell you what I do. I pause and I praise Jesus that on Silent Saturday, the cross is empty. What he did, he did once and for all. He'll never have to go back to a rugged cross. He'll never have to go back to Skull Hill. He'll never have to have his blood spilled at Calvary once again because his blood was the all-sufficient payment and sacrifice for all of our sins, for all of history, for all of humanity. Glory to God. 
Hallelujah. So what I want you to understand this morning, friend, that if you are in Christ, you're no longer under the powerful law of sin and death. When I review Romans chapter 6, 7, and 8, I sometimes just get lost in my praise to God because here's the apostle Paul having this flashback of remembering what it was like to try to be a religious man and trying to use all the devoutness of his religion to draw close to God. But he come to a conclusion at the end of Romans chapter 7. He began to understand it's all futile. And you hear him making this statement, oh, who shall deliver me from this body of death? He recognized that there was a death that was impending his soul, a separation from God. So he declares, who shall deliver me from this body of death? I thank God that it's through Jesus Christ, my Lord. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Why? Because the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Glory to His name. Therefore, I proclaim to you today that if you are in Christ, you need not fear death. There is no power of sin that can hold you back once you've been forgiven of your sins and you've been changed by the glory of God. If you've been born again into the family of God, I tell you, my brother, and I tell you, my sister, you need not fear death. I read a story about a little girl who walked home every day from school, and on her walk home from school, the route took her through a small cemetery such as the one behind us, and she had to cross right through the middle of that cemetery. Somebody asked her one day, well, are you afraid when you cross that cemetery? She said, no, I just crossed through it on my way home. Can I tell you that's what the resurrection means to you and I? It means that death ain't no big deal. We're not going to be scared of death. We're not going to be held by death. But if we are in Christ because of the resurrection, we just cross through death on our way home. Glory to His name. Christ resurrection means that He has neutralized Him who had the power of death, the devil. When John the Revelator gets a revelation of Jesus the Christ, he hears Jesus tell him, I am he that lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and of death. I have to tell you this morning, if I'm trying to figure out what am I going to do with the rest of my life, I tell you, that's the one I want to serve, the one that has the keys of hell and of death, the one that's already conquered death, that's already neutralized the power of Satan. I can't fight death. I can't win this battle on my own. No, because of what Jesus done, he has neutralized the power of death that the devil had, and death cannot hold us if we are in Christ. So therefore, we can proclaim like we find the Scripture do at the end of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. If you've got that victory this morning, let me hear you say amen. amen. Praise God. These church mothers left the empty tomb, the Bible declares, with great joy. That means they had the assurance that everything's going to be all right. So what this means is that Easter Sunday is the day that changed the world. But let me help you to understand something. Easter Sunday, the message of Easter isn't that death doesn't exist. We do not deny the existence of death. I mean, we all going to die. Ain't none of us getting out of here alive. Did you look in the mirror this morning? That body of flesh must die. It will die one day. But if you're in Christ, the Bible declares we shall be changed. <laughs> in the moment, in a twinkling of an eye, when we are resurrected to be together forever with the Lord, the Bible declares that there will be a great getting up morning and we shall be changed just like our glorious Savior was changed. And so we find these church mothers left the empty tomb with great joy. And the message of Easter had changed their life from that very moment. And now they had a commission to go and tell others. But again, may I tell you, I'm not trying to tell you that you or your loved ones won't die. Eventually, you will die. But the message of Resurrection Sunday means that these words are forever stamped upon the doorpost of your soul. He lives. 
He lives. So that means regardless of whatever storms you go through throughout the remainder of your life, if you're in Christ, you have these words stamped upon the doorpost of your soul. He lives. And if He lives, that means I'm going to live. That means death can't hold me. Death may try to oppress me. Death may try to affect me. Death may try to bring me down. But death can't hold me and it can't keep me because I am in Christ and He lives. Glory to His name. Hallelujah. The message of Resurrection Sunday is the great nevertheless that affects all of history. It means regardless of what happens, God is still in control. The resurrection is true. The tomb is empty. And Jesus is the King of kings and Lord of lords. Somebody give him praise this morning. There's a great nevertheless I find in Scripture that always kind of convicts and encourages my soul at the same time. 2 Timothy chapter 2 Verse 19, the Bible says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure. Having this seal, the Lord knows those who are His. But let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Can I just tell you, ain't none of us fooling nobody? God knows. God knows exactly who we are and where we are. God knows if we're His. God knows if we're floundering in our faith. God knows if we've just been playing religion. And He actually desires a close, intimate relationship with every one of us. Look around just a moment. Don't point fingers or nothing, okay? That ain't nice. That's rude. Look around just a moment. You've never seen a person in your life that God doesn't desire to have an intimate, personal relationship with. So we find today that by His resurrection, Christ has neutralized the fear of death once and for all. There's no guilt in life. There's no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. But then we find the angel gave these words to the women. He said and invited them, come, see the place where he lay. So Christ's resurrection must be personally experienced. These women were invited to come and see for themselves. It's not you can just trust what I'm telling you. God says you don't have to just trust what I'm telling you. Come and see the tomb is empty. And when they walked into that tomb and, and went down, they did not see a body. They saw that the tomb was empty. All they saw was his grave clothes folded up nice and neat, white, all laying there, which indicated, you know what, I'm done. I'm done with this spirit that I was in I just borrowed it for a little while so we find that their faith must be personalized and our faith must be personalized when they went and told the first two disciples Peter and John their report was not good enough my friend they had to go and see for themselves and I tell you by eyes of faith you must see that the tomb is empty by yourself you've got to go for yourself you cannot trust the report of this preacher or any other witness by eyes of faith you must accept you must go you must see the place where he lay and realize that we have an empty tomb to prove our Savior lives. What does that mean then? That means that you and I can be changed by the same Spirit that raised Him up from the dead. A personal experience with God will change your life forever. There's a reason why I preach this gospel. Because I believe people can change by the grace of God. Anybody here need the grace of God? Could I just make that confession to you today? I need His grace. I'm dependent upon His grace. I'm not yet exactly what I think I should be or what God wants me to be, but thank God I've been changed by the power of grace. Glory to His name. And the Bible gives this promise to all of us. It says, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Would you please simply hear what the Spirit of God is saying to you today? I speak with all the compassion that a pastor can bring when he brings a prophetic word. But may I just indicate that some of us in this room have been playing with religion. We've played too loose and too fast with our relationship with God. Please understand, I'm excited for you today because today you can drop the play. You can stop pretending and you can become the devout follower of Jesus Christ that He's called you to be. Some of you here today, though, 
or hearing truths of the gospel for the very first time in your life. And I'm so excited for you because today you get to choose for yourself that Jesus wants to have a relationship with me. He wants to forgive me of my sins. I'm going to take him up on the best offer I've ever heard. I'm going to exchange my sinful life for his pure resurrection life. Please hear the word of the Lord to you today. He says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Friend, if you're living in willful sin in your life, there is a double burden of sin in your life. You're laboring and you're heavy burdened. You know you're doing wrong and you know that weightiness rests upon your soul. But Jesus says, if you'll come to me, I will give you rest. Some of us have made up our mind that living as a Christian is too hard and I can't do it. Friend, nothing could be farther from the truth. Everything that you give up in exchange for following Christ makes your soul so much lighter and the way becomes so much easier. Listen to what Jesus says. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So therefore, we find today the power of death has been neutralized, and your faith can be personalized. However, before I leave this morning's sermon, I have to tell you there's a relevant message in this text for today's Christ followers. The Marys were told this, go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And as they quickly run away from the tomb, they run into Jesus. Do you realize what joy must have filled their souls in that moment? Okay, if we had any doubts after we saw that the tomb was empty, now we see the resurrected Christ for ourselves. But then Jesus essentially gives them that same commission, this same message to go and tell. He tells them, do not be afraid, go and tell. I tell you today that if you claim to be a Christ follower, if you claim to have been affected by the power of the resurrection, you have this same responsibility to go and tell. That is, let me just put it to you this way. If you know that your Savior rose from the dead for you, why wouldn't you want to tell somebody? You know, we're, we're so spoiled on this side of grace. We, we look back and we just accept this common truth. But i got to tell you, these first century disciples knew that they served a risen Savior and they were so excited about it, so filled with joy, they could not wait to tell others. They were mobilized by the only message that has the power to save. So therefore, if you know your risen Savior has conquered death, hell, and the grave, you don't fear what other people think about you. You're just going to go and tell somebody. I love the way the Scripture tells me in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, for the love of Christ compels us. Why is this? We know that He died for all and that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for Him who died for them and rose again. Today it's been my privilege to tell you the first Resurrection Sunday is the day that changed everything. The power of this day means every peep can be changed from a spectator to a follower of Jesus Christ. Today, I would just advocate that you forget trying to get everything straightened out in your life. Oh, when I get this taken care of and when this week's worked out, that's when I'm going to get in church and really, no, friend, come as you are. Because the fact is, every time you get one thing straightened out, you're going to see there's another thing you need to get straightened out, and then another thing. And you can't straighten out and fix all your problems by yourself. How do I know? I've been watching people for, for many years now, and nobody's ever able to get it all straightened out on their own. They need the help of God. That's the only way any of us can be changed to begin to follow him. I tell you, against all odds, against the grain, love finds a way. And you can be changed just like I was. That's an old country song that I just quoted from Montgomery Gentry. Some people change. Some of you like country music. I'm just kind of a guy that likes a little bit of music across all genres. doesn't really matter. If the music is positive and if it inspires me, I'll take the inspiration and keep serving God. I said that just to help some of you because you couldn't believe that a pastor actually appreciates a country music song. But in that country music song, it tells the story about individuals who had lived a willfully sinful life till the grace of God got in the way. And then they were changed by the power of God unto salvation. 
Would you stand with me all over this congregation? When I was a young man, I was a sinner. I was dead in my sins and trespasses. I'm very grateful, though, that God put some godly people into my life, in my circle, that, that it wasn't by accident that we were in the same circles. And I thank God that they loved him and loved me enough that they actually told me the truth. They said, you know, you can have a better life. They said, you know, there's peace waiting for you. And, and they witnessed to me and they loved me. They weren't very pushy. They just wanted me to know, you know what, there's something so much better if you'll take him up on it today I want to encourage you some of you are just like me like I was I was on the outside looking in I wanted more I needed something I knew that my life was hopeless thank God for the gospel it is the only power to save this last week in preparation I read about an African Muslim who had become a Christian when some of his friends learned about his decision to follow Christ they put him on the spot and they asked him, why have you become a Christian? He answered them like this. He said, well, it's like this. Suppose you were going down the road and suddenly the road forked in two directions and you didn't know which way to go. There at the fork were two men. One is dead, one is alive. Who would you ask which way to go? Obviously, only a living Savior can tell you the way to get home. There's a home in heaven that's awaiting all of us, and God is calling every one of us to make our eternal reservations with Him. And all we have to do is place our faith in Jesus Christ. So today, in these closing moments of the service, I'm going to ask you, because I want to help you, I want to help you to take that first step of commitment, that first step of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not the only step, but it's like the first step, okay? And I want to help you today to get started on the way of following Christ. I've prepared a prayer of salvation, and I want to ask every person in here, regardless of where you think you're at with God, you'd say, I'm saved by the grace of God. I know it. I'm absolutely sure of my salvation. Or you'd say, you know what, Pastor, I've got some doubts not exactly sure. I want to go to heaven. I've got loved ones that have passed and I believe they're, they're there. I don't want to see them. Well, friend, the only hope is we make sure that we're following Jesus Christ because he is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the only way that knows. He's the only one that knows the way back home. And you've never been there. He has. So I admonish you today follow him. Let's get started with praying this prayer out loud. I ask you to repeat after me, and then we'll have an opportunity to come to an altar of prayer for more prayer. Would you repeat this prayer after me? Father, I am sorry that I have not fully believed the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am a sinner, and I cannot save myself. Jesus, I believe you are the eternal Son of God who died on the cross shedding your sinless blood for my sins. You rose from the dead for my new life. I ask you to save me. By faith, I receive your forgiveness for my sins and the gift of eternal life. I trust you as my Savior because you are my Lord I commit to turning away from my sinful past and I commit to living the rest of my life as a real follower of Jesus Christ Amen Glory to God Hallelujah Praise God Please remain standing for just a few moments more. I want to invite anyone here that say, Pastor, I want to seal the deal. I want to pray with somebody individually. I want to make sure 
then I'm where I need to be with God. Or perhaps you're, you're here today and you say, Pastor, there's another issue in my life. Maybe you've got a loved one that's sick in body. Maybe it's you and, and you want prayer. You want somebody who believes in the power of God for chains to pray and agree with you. Well, friend, I've got some spirit-filled people of God up here who've had a genuine experience with God and they'd be glad to pray with you and believe God for the needs of your life. But you may be here today and you'd say, you know what? I just really feel like I need to humble myself and kneel in an altar. Well, friend, if you want to pray by yourself or with somebody, you're welcome to do that. Grab somebody by the hand or come by yourself. Let's come to the Lord today. Let's come to the altars and let's seek His face. Let's give Him some praise as we pray.
kindness of this moment. I just want to encourage you, oh child of God. This is a day to give him praise. This is a day to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. This is a day that nothing that happens should be able to knock the smile off your face. It's like glory to God. If he is risen, he is risen indeed. And that means all things are possible to them that believe. Can I take just these next 90 seconds to two minutes and just ask you, friend, don't delay. There, there's some things that are burdening your soul, and you've been just letting them build up, and, and you've been thinking, well, it's going to all work out eventually. Have you called upon him? Have Instead of worrying and, and acting like you're just so concerned about this situation, have you, have you actually asked God for his help and for his intervention? Now, I'm just not speaking prophetically here, but I'm absolutely certain that in a congregation of this side, there's somebody who could use a miracle in your life. Am I in the right house today? Anybody need to see the miracle working power of God at work for you and your family and your life? Maybe there's somebody you've been praying for and you understand that the gospel is the only hope they have. Right where you're seated, I wonder if you'd begin to call upon the Lord today, right there where you're standing. Let's begin to pray. Let's begin to ask God to intervene, work miracles in these situations. Father, we confess. It was important enough for me to worry about it. I've let it burden my soul. Lord, I've been sitting so low and I've acted so concerned about some of these situations. But God, today I ask you, Lord, to intervene with your miracle working power. Jesus, if you've been resurrected from the grave, then today I call upon you the power of your spirit, the same spirit that raised you up from the grave. God, would you miraculously intervene in this situation in my life? Lord, I give this individual to you. Lord, I give this set of circumstances. Lord, that are impossible for me to work with, impossible for me to change. But God, I know all things are possible to you. Therefore, I come to you in faith. I ask you to intervene. I ask you to move in my life situation. Oh, pray in church. Give him praise. He's hearing your prayers. Glory to his name. Let's sing just a moment longer. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. make a final request of you. Friend, today, if you've committed your life to Christ, or perhaps you'd say, I've recommitted my life to Christ, would you please indicate that on your Connect card? That's going to let me know to be praying for you over the next couple of weeks. And when we get those Connect cards, myself, Pastor John, other staff members, we'll be praying for you. We'll be calling your name out individually before heaven. So please let us know that we can pray with you. And lastly, before Pastor Debbie comes, let me just encourage you. If you don't have a church home, and this is like, you know, the first time or the second time you've been here in a long time, let me encourage you to please understand this. We want this to be your every Sunday home. We love you. We appreciate you for being here today. But now that you're here, you're not leaving as a guest. You're not leaving as a stranger. You're leaving as family. And family meets here every Sunday. Pastor Debbie. Praise God. It has been a joy worshiping with you in person here today. We appreciate our long online 
uh, viewers, but I'm telling you, when we come together in the house of God, it's just something special, isn't it, where we can just kind of reach out and touch one another. Praise the Lord. We want to encourage you, if you're 18 or over, to be sure and fill out that Connect card. Drop it off at the Connect Center and uh, make sure that you make yourself available to win one of five $50 cards that's going to be given away. Amen? You don't want to win that $50 card. Praise the Lord. I also want to tell you that next Sunday, uh, Pastor William will begin a sermon series on marriage, and it's going to be entitled, From This Moment On. Does that remind you of a song maybe you've heard before? Amen. Let's celebrate Jesus today and every day. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today, God, for your son, Jesus, and that precious gift of life that he brings to us. We praise you, God, that his blood covers it all. And we celebrate you today and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen.